I've been using Snow Leopard um, for a few days now. I got it quite late. I got a, ordered it from Amazon a few days after it came out. It took a while to get here. But I got it a couple of days ago. I installed it. And I'm going to just try and give you a quick overview of what I think about Snow Leopard. So you probably know that Snow Leopard, this is just the box by the way, is not a major upgrade. It's not a new operating system. It's a refined version of um, Leopard. That's what Apple are kind of calling it and advertising it as. Um, it, it even says on the box, the world's most advanced operating system, referring to Leopard, finally tuned. Um, then obviously referring to Snow Leopard. It's relatively cheap um, for an operating system, but I wouldn't class it as a new operating system, so I wouldn't expect them to charge any more for it. Um, they sell it for, with um, shipping, in this country around £30 um, I suggest getting it from Amazon actually if you're going to buy it if you haven't already got it yet um, because it, it's a bit cheaper from there so what I'm going to do is basically go through some of the main features and new features that Apple have listed on their website and give you my um, opinion on each of them and by the way if you, I'd, if you want to get it or even if you got it I highly recommend going to the Apple website, um, finding the Mac OS X section, and then looking at the full feature list. Um, you can get to that by going to what's new, then scrolling all the way down to the bottom and clicking see even more refinements in Mac OS X Snow Leopard, because you might just find something that you think is useful that you wouldn't have known about if you didn't read the full feature list. I have gone through all of them, there's loads of new features, most of them are really small but um, th there's some good solid updates in Snow Leopard. So the refinements is the first um, section of the what's new in Snow Leopard section. They start with the finder and they say the all new exactly the same finder. That's one problem I have with Snow Leopard. I was never a big fan of the Finder before. Um, I found it quite. Um, it, it didn't give me a user experience that matched everything else in OS X. I've always found the Finder a bit irritating to use and lacking many features. And they haven't changed it at all um, as far as the user interface goes actually using it it's pretty much exactly the same they've rewritten it uh, made it faster which which is a start making it faster but I think they should have done more with it for Snow Leopard um, just added added some more features and made it a bit nicer to use so th th they've improved it uh, but uh, all I can say is at least it hasn't got any worse it hasn't got uh, much better either though. The next feature they talk about is um, expose and stacks. So stacks I, I don't use very much anyway. I have download stack um, n not again when you first look at it not many new changes and, and new features. It, it's a, a very small improvement they made with stacks expose you can see the difference and this is what I think about expose I think they've rushed it too much it's more useful than before um, it's organized when you activate expose um, for anyone who doesn't know what it is it's when basically all you can see since OSN doesn't have like a taskbar like Windows there's no way to see all of your open Windows, you can see the open apps, but not all of the open windows, because an app could contain many windows, like Safari, for example. And um, it it shows you all of the windows at once. It sort of makes them all small and arranges them on the screen. Now, before in I'm um, just Leopard, it didn't organize them at all. It they stayed scattered all around, and you couldn't see the name of the app until 
or that particular window until you held your cursor over one of them. So what they've changed is they've made it more organized now. The windows go into a, a better order so it's easy to find what you are looking for. And they've added the title of each window under each um, preview of the window. And you can also preview a window by um, hovering your cursor over one and hitting space and it'll return to its full size. Um, which is you, you hold you press space and then you can basically go over them and it'll as you move your mouse over window it'll zoom it to the where it, the the correct size where it was originally because often if in turn that off in expose if you've got m maybe a few safari windows or some text files which are just a page of text it makes them all smaller and makes it harder to see they've also made expose um, you can look at you can view windows from one app at a time it's like app specific which is very helpful you can access like that feature by clicking and holding an icon in the dock now that's something I've wanted for a long time so what I don't like about Exposé, like what I said, is they seem to have not spent enough time on it. It's not when the windows move into their position to be so you can see all of them at once. It's not very smooth. It it's not a nice smooth transition from where it where it is to the Exposé position of it. And the blue outline that appears around the edge when you hover over a particular window it I don't think it looks as nice as it as it should or as it could um, with uh, in Snow Leopard but it, as far as functionality uh, is concerned it's it's better with and that's that's the most important thing because expose is to help you be more productive and help you keep track and keep all of your windows organized but I think this should make it look a bit nicer. The other should have already made it look nicer for the release of Snow Leopard. Time Machine. This is the next one listed. Um, Time Machine. I've definitely noticed it's more. Um, the it it says it's faster. I haven't really noticed that, but it's definitely more responsive when you click stop backing up. Um, I've noticed. I noticed before in Leopard. I would click stop and it would continue to stop it, it would say stop stopping backup for quite a while but now you click stop backup it stops the backup and the, this basi that's basically all time machine does it backs up and lets you stop the backup while it's backing up there's not much more to it, it I think it is faster I, I couldn't really prove that I haven't timed it or taken that much notice of it but it they say it's faster it, it must be a little bit faster at least which is always a good thing time machine is a great backup um, solution anyway I've, I've accidentally deleted files a few times I know that sounds hard to do but I've managed to do it all I need to do is click time machine and straight away I can restore the files from any point in the past that I want. So faster to wake up and shut down. Now I found this a little disappointing because I think the most important one would be the boot time and they haven't seemed to do anything with that at all. Waking up it would do it in about three seconds or less anyway. So I, it's hard to notice that it's faster. It is very fast, but it was very fast before. But at least it's not slow, once again. And they said it, m it must be faster. I'm not going to say Apple are lying about that. But it's not a feature that I would have said, yes, Apple, I would love my Mac to wake up faster, because it did it fast already. And shutting down. 
I'm I'm not that bothered about how fast it shuts down as long as as long as it's quick. I managed to from being idle. Uh, my iMac would shut down in about five or six seconds, and it's pretty similar now with Snow Leopard. Maybe it's faster to shut down when I've got a lot of apps running, but if I'm going to shut down, I generally close them all anyway, just to make sure I've saved everything and I'm not going to lose anything and make sure all the apps close properly. And usually I just put my Mac to sleep anyway, but you might shut it down. Now if you've got, say, a Macbook, that would be a good feature. For a desktop it doesn't really make that much difference, because generally if you shut it down, you click shut down and you'd leave it. It doesn't matter how long it actually spends doing so. But at least they've made progress with the speeds of various things. I wish they had improved the time it took to start up though. Um, I would love it to be able to get to the desktop from being completely off faster. Oh, I'm up to 11 minutes already. So, it claims to give you 7 gigabytes um, of space back from your hard drive. I was stupid enough to forget to check how much space was taken up on my m main hard drive before I installed it. Um, I might be able to find out through Time Machine. I haven't actually had a look yet, but most people that I've that have installed it have claimed to get um, quite a lot back. Some people much more than the seven gigabytes that Apple claim. If I just, I don't think I'll actually be able to check with Time Machine because it because of the way it backs up. Um, I'll have a look later and try and inform you if I manage to find out. And faster, more reliable installation. Um, the installation you only e um, do once for most people unless you like to reinstall the operating system um, on a regular basis. Ma it, it installed really quickly for me with no problems, which was great. I wouldn't say that was a reason why you should buy it. Um, it's, a ni it's a nice feature once, once you have bought it when you come to actually install it, but it doesn't make me want to buy it yes I, I don't think yes I'll go out and buy snow leopard because it will install quickly but <laughs> sorry Apple I don't think people think that way but it, it did it in about 35 40 minutes which was wasn't too bad to install an operating system QuickTime 10 QuickTime 10 is really nice actually I'm not too keen on the black title bar but it disappears when you move your mouse away, which I really like, so you can just focus on the video, and it has, and it can, it has screen recording built in, which is a great feature. It'll be really useful for lots of people, and potentially for me if I find anything to record on my screen if I want to make a YouTube video out of it. It has basic editing built in. I think it's got like um, pretty much all of the QuickTime Pro things in from before. I never actually had QuickTime Pro, I never bought it, but it, QuickTime is definitely more advanced now, and I may be wrong, but I think it can record from your webcam also, um, for example, the built-in iSight camera. Um, it's got, it says, innovative Chinese character input, that doesn't really af affect me in any way, I've never wanted to input Chinese characters, so I'm going to skip that one. Um, so I'm sorry if that w is something that would interest you, but I can't comment on that. I think that, that that's just for MacBooks as well, which I don't have. iChat, I haven't used that in Snow Leopard yet. Um, it says it's more reliable, which is a good thing. Snow, Le Snow Leopard is all about being more stable and more reliable, which which is why um, I think it's a good operating system. I'll get to that at the end. Um, the right service at the right time, um, it's a nice feature that they've added. I haven't really noticed it working too well. 
and I have I haven't used that feature yet. It it hasn't. When I write, it it I'm. Must be doing something wrong, but it doesn't come up if I right click something. So it's not really giving me the right service at the right time because in their their example, it has make new mail notes as an option. I can't. That's probably something I'm doing wrong though. And the final, coming close to the end now of this main list of features, automatic time zone setup is a nice feature if you travel a lot. Automatic updates for printer drivers means you don't have to do it manually. Easy PDF text selection. I never really had a problem with it before, but I've, I've, with some um, PDF files it would have been difficult. Not something I did regularly. But again, these little improvements will overall make a, a better operating system. And a faster, more powerful Safari with Safari 4. Um, Safari 4 is great to use. It's been out for a while though. More reliable disk eject. Now, with Leopard, I often had problems where the disk wouldn't come out of the drive. Because, as you know, with a Mac there's no physical button to press on the Mac to get a disk out of the disk tray, the, well not the, tr it's not a tray, there's no physical tray there, um, out of the drive. You, it's all software based and it often just failed basically at getting the disk out. I've only taken one disk or two disks out in Snow Leopard um, so far. I actually had a problem with the second one, um, ironically, if that's irony. I had it 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 unmounted the disk um in the software but it didn't didn't physically come out the drive until I pressed the eject button again but at least it came out but hopefully I won't have many prob or any problems when the disk won't come out because it it's quite irritating I had I experienced that a few times in Leopard you'd press eject and it, the disk would stay stuck in the drive and since there's n no way of pressing a button on the front of the computer like you'd usually do with a PC it can take quite a bit of troubleshooting to try and get the disk out the final one on the list is more efficient file sharing and it sounds good but you need airport extreme or time capsule for that to work and I don't have either of them because Apple as usual charge far too much for them so that they are the main refinements and new features in OS X and ev everything is that they've listed there has been improved but not a lot but like I said it's, it's not a whole new operating system um, Apple say that it's just a small update to Leopard and the technology side of things and they've made it more future ready and future proof um, with things like six, the going to 64 bit technology as the state on this page it's more secure and overall the operating system is just more refined to make it faster may not be too noticeable when you're just using it on a four simple tasks but it will be a bit faster whatever you are doing Wh which is it'll help you get things done faster and quicker whether you realize that or not although I, I've been quite negative with the things I've said in Snow Leopard I think it's a good solid upgrade um, if you've got Leopard right now or an earlier version of OS 10 I definitely recommend upgrading to Snow Leopard it's it's not too overpriced, um, about 25, you can get it for about 25 pounds, um, or 30 dollars, I believe, in America. So it, it's worth buying, because it's got some new features, it's all a, it's a, a bit more up to date, it, they've improved various things, it's faster, it's more reliable, it's more secure. Um, features that 
won't necessarily make a huge difference to the way you use your Mac every day, but will improve the overall experience and features you really, some of them you need, um, some of them you just want. It, it's hard to describe or explain why you should buy Snow Leopard, but I, I definitely think that everyone who uses Leopard right now should invest £25 in. And it, it's not, l a few people have asked me this, um, I mentioned it in the unboxing and start of the installation that I recorded. It's an upgrade, it doesn't affect anything you've already got, all your apps will stay there, all your documents will stay there, all your settings will stay the same, nothing will be changed. It'll just improve the various features and add some of the new features that I've talked about today. Now I know this has been a long video, I'm up to 20 minutes now, um, I hope I've covered um, most of the main parts and main new things of Snow Leopard. As usual this was a very unorganised video because I don't plan my videos as you probably guessed. Um, I can't really think of anything else I can say about Snow Leopard because it was such a small update. And I think the only thing you can, s just looking at it, the only visual difference is the desktop background and it's still very, very similar. On iTunes 9, um, the release that I know this doesn't directly go with Snow Leopard. Um, I, th I might as well talk about it now though anyway, since if you, you since you probably be updating the Snow Leopard and iTunes 9 at the same time. It's a, it's a really great update um, going from iTunes 8 to iTunes 9. If you haven't already downloaded it, um, I definitely recommend you do so. Especially with the home sharing feature, that's my favourite one of all. Being able to share all the songs across up to five, acro across the max up to five of them in your home. But I'm, I'm not going to talk about iTunes 9 too much right now because it, it's not Snow Leopard, which was what this video was about. If you want to ask me anything else about Snow Leopard, you can email me. My email address is jake at jakewright.net. Um, we also have a live chat, which is... I don't know how many people have been in. I think they'll have all got bored by now. <laughs> Since I'm up to 23 minutes-ish. Um, the Ustream timer never seems to be very accurate. And But that that is the chat down there. There we go. Some activity, some life now. You can find that at the URL that's just there, live.jakewright.net. And that's where you, jakewright.net, that's where you'll basically find everything that I do online. Um, thanks for watching.